Shelves in the Natural History Museum's archive filled with animal specimens preserved in jars of clear spirit. A man with black framed glasses speaks to the camera from within the archive. On screen text reads, Dr. Jeff Stryker, curator of amphibians and reptiles. We started getting interested in frog vision just by looking around the collection that we have here at the Natural History Museum. Dr. Stryker studies a frog preserved in a jar with Perth, Australia written on its label. Frogs have very different shapes and sizes of eyes. Many are nocturnal, so we think this might relate to how well they can see in the dark. Close-up of eyes of different frog species. We're really interested in looking at what light does to the eye to better understand frog and toad vision. And this involves collaboration with vision specialist Ron Douglas here in London. A man wearing a gingham shirt looks through a microscope. Caption reads, Professor Ron Douglas, biologist at City University. Vision is very complex and we have to understand many different stages. So in this particular project, I'm looking at the colours of light which get through the lens. A car travelling along a forest road, then Dr Stryker making his way through the trees on foot. So in addition to the work in the collection, we're actually collecting new specimens that we can work with. After dark, a scientist lifts a frog off a tree branch and holds it in his hands. We spent about four weeks looking for frogs, which involved a lot of nighttime surveys. So in the field, we actually had a makeshift dark lab. We would dissect a frog eye for examination on our microscope. And this gives us a range of colors the animal may be able to see. But there's more to it than that. We have to look at which wavelengths, which colors get through the lens, because they can stop certain wavelengths reaching the retina. A clear frog eye lens is placed by tweezers into a metal rod with a hole. We place it within a spectrophotometer, which scans through the visible spectrum from the red all the way down to ultraviolet, determining which wavelengths get blocked by the lens. On a computer monitor, a graph comparing two frog lenses. So now we've got two lenses on the screen. The blue one lets through lots of ultraviolet light. That's very different to the species in the red line, which cuts off all light in the ultraviolet, and rather like humans, will not see ultraviolet light. It's really neat to see these two patterns because that helps us interpret the other data that we're collecting. Many of the species which let ultraviolet through to the retina are nocturnal, whereas many which cut out the UV are day active. Nocturnal animals probably benefit from having lenses that let through ultraviolet light. This is exciting because it suggests that frog vision is much more diverse than we thought when we started this project. Looking at all of that diversity is incredibly important to understanding the evolution of vertebrate vision, including our own vision as human beings. A close-up photograph of a frog's eye is overlaid on the left-hand side of the semi-opaque black rectangle in which the credits are displayed. Film Nick Street, Music Audio Network. Text reads, J. Stryker and D. Gower, NHM, R. Bell, Smithsonian, and M. Fujita, UT Arlington, in collaboration with R. Douglas, City University, and E. Loev, Cornell, funded by NERC and NSF. Text continues, French Guiana fieldwork with G. Bittencourt Silver, M. Wilkinson, K. Rowlands, S. Janssenswillen, H. Augustinen, S. Maddock, C. Cox, Camper Tower, P. Goucher, CNRS. On the right-hand side is the Natural History Museum logo consisting of the words Natural History Museum displayed in a column flanked by a large letter N on the left. Text at the bottom reads, copyright owned by the trustees of the Natural History Museum London.